I had lost everything at the time. Lost the house. I couldn't go any lower than I went. I mean, there always is lower, but it was pretty bad. And I didn't feel sorry for myself. I, I had no time. There was no time to feel sorry for myself. My job was to support my family. And I was looking for the best, which way do I go? Welcome to the I Own It Podcast with Ben Reinberg. We are live from Laguna Beach, California at the Ben Reinberg I Own It Studios today. And I'm really excited to bring on our next guest. Uh, she is wildly successful and talented. And uh, anyone in real estate always floats my boat because people understand being in commercial real estate, how much I love commercial real estate. And so anyone in real estate I could talk shop with uh, is always a pleasure to to have on the show. And she's just more than that. And you're going to find out really soon. Vivian Reese, welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us today. What a privilege to have you on. And uh, it's great to see you. you look fantastic. Thank you. And thank you for having me on. I'm really excited about being on your show today. I've heard a lot of great things and watched all your, all your episodes. And this is exciting. Thank you. I appreciate it. So many successful entrepreneurs hit a certain level of success. And then they ease their foot off the gas. Your story of building a small brokerage office in Canada's largest independently owned Royal LePage franchise, to me, is inspirational. Let's kick things off. Share more about how you approach growth and success, both professionally and personally, over the course of your career. Absolutely. You said it right. It's, it's together. Personal and business are definitely hand in hand. If things aren't right at home, it's going to be difficult for you to succeed in business and vice versa. If they're not great at the, in, in your business life, then your personal life suffers as well. Uh, with me, it started um, way back. I, you know, in sales, as you were in sales. And um, I, you know, I was a struggling realtor in the around 89. Before that, I was, a, you know, hitting the big numbers, top producer, all the accolades. And uh, in 89, as you know, the market took a nosedive and the interest rates went up and our market dropped about 40%. So things completely, you know, uh, were disarray. And um, I needed to, at, at the same time, then, I mean, when it rains, it falls, snows or rains, whatever. My marriage was on the rocks as well. And so I had three children and I needed to find my, my space in the real estate industry. So my space was more of helping people. I was managing the office, even without being the manager. So realtors would come to me for advice for, you know, uh, what do I do? How do I prepare this offer? Um, and I helped them. And I felt that that was where I was leaning towards is, is um, training, coaching in, in that field. But I didn't really understand about I, back then there was no such really uh, position as coaching. That didn't really exist. It wasn't that popular. And I took on a manager's job. And from there, the company was sold within six months. So my job, my security was gone. So I was forced into making a decision to either go work for somebody else again and not sure where my future would be or buy the office. And I had an 18 person office. The uh, company that I mentioned was bought by an American firm. So they were liquidating each location. And I thought that, you know, if I could, if I could somehow put a deal together with the owners to buy this office, I, I could make a go of it. I just felt like I, I needed something that I could hang on to and I could create something out of nothing because I had, I had a base and I looked at that as, Hey, you know what? There's a base here. There's a location. There's 18 agents. Well, you know, the math, 18 agents or producers, if you're lucky. Right. And I, um, I managed to contact the man, the president of the company. And I said, Hey, you know, I, I brought value to the table. I said, look, at, if I, if I buy this office, I can be, you know, your spokesperson to other people looking at buying the other locations. And he said, mm, interesting. I said, I'm pretty influential. And he said, uh, okay, yeah, I'm interested. I said, the only problem is, I said, my capital's all tied up. Well, I didn't have capital then. I mean, really, I did not have capital, but hey, it sounded good at the time. And um, he said, okay, well, what are you proposing? So I proposed a deal that um, I would be paying for this office over time. And so he sent in his accountants. They showed me all the books. I really 
did not understand what I was looking at, but I, I consulted with professionals and they said, you know, Vivian, it's losing money. I said, oh, well, obviously it's losing money. Otherwise, why would they be selling it? And it needed renovations that needed all of the TLC that, you know, offices need. At the time, computers were, were becoming very popular and we needed computers and um, renovations and the place looked tired. So I was approached by many brokers saying, well, we'll buy it and you work for us. And I said, well, I did make my phone calls to many of the brokers out there. And one in particular said, why don't you buy it? And I thought, well, with what? And that's when I came up with this idea of being, being my salesperson skills that I had, terms. As you know, terms are more as important, if not more important than price. So I negotiated my terms and um, I bought the office. But I didn't, I forgot, I didn't not forget, but I, I was missing one piece of the puzzle was I didn't have a broker's license and I needed a broker's license. So I had to go back to school. I had to bring on a broker director temporarily. So I was, you know, juggling, managing the company and um, trying to leverage myself. I did it and I built the office over a period of time to over a thousand realtors. Right now we're at 1400. We have 10 locations and um, that's really, that's it. That's the story. What, what, what a great story that is. That's so inspirational. That's, that's an entrepreneur driven woman in you that is is an incredible story i love to hear things like that you know you you touched on a point of your professional and your personal life inter integrate and i i relay that to my employees i relay that to people out there that i mentor as as well as help as well and such an important point is that most people don't realize if you could work on yourself and become the best version of yourself it will help you grow in business life as well and you seem to have mastered that. What an incredible story. You know, I also, you're a single mom, correct? And, yes. and, and to me, that's amazing. I have a lot of women that work at my company Alliance that are single mothers. Uh, I'm a huge fan to be able to promote someone that comes from maybe a challenging background or a single parent and allowing them to grow and flourish and not have a ceiling to allow them to become the person they want to be. And so it really resonates to me when, when I hear you're a single mom, especially, you know, your three kids were younger. How did you approach time management? It's something I always look at with my employees. So you could have enough time for your business, your family, but also Vivian for yourself. So what I did Ben, is I had lost everything at the time, lost the house. Um, everything was, you know, you couldn't, I couldn't go any lower than I went. I mean, there always is lower, but it was pretty bad. And 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 I didn't feel sorry for myself. I, I had no time. There was no time to feel sorry for myself. My job was to support my family. And I was looking for the best, what, which way do I go? You know, I could have supported my, my family with working for someone else, but I didn't want to be vulnerable. I just thought, here's an opportunity. It's that train going by. You know, that train that goes by, do you jump on? Or do you just wait? And I jumped up. And what I, it was difficult because the reason I went into management and out of sales was so I could spend time with my kids. At, they were at a very vulnerable age. The family you know, unit was broken. I was concerned about my family. And once I made the decision to buy the office, I called the kids in and I said, listen, I need your, I need your support. And they just looked at me like, what do you mean? I need your support. I'm buying the office and they're looking at me with what? I go, I'm coming up with that. And my son said, you'll figure it out, mom, you always do. And, and I thought, okay, that's that's great support. And I said, but I need you guys to, to not to wander. I need you to work with me. So what I did was I brought in my kids into the business part-time. They went to school. So I had my daughters working at the front desk part-time. And my son would come in at night with his friend and they would clean the office. Well, they really weren't cleaning, Ben. They were making a mess, but water was split. But they were cleaning the office. So they were the office cleaners. My daughter were working there. So we became connected. You know, I brought them in. And then, of course, they continued on with university and, you know, learned the, the business from the inside out. As they got older and more mature and, and graduated, got their degrees, I thought, well, they're not going to stay in the business. They're going to want, you know, go on to other things, law school, you know, medical school, um, marketing, and they all kind of wandered back. 
And I thought, well, you're going to come back into the business. They'd had experience internally. So they worked the business from the inside out. They worked in administration. They worked in, in, in deals processing. They worked in the banks, the banking of the business. They worked it all. So they were experienced. And they really said you know, they wanted to be involved. So I brought them in and um, just gave them the reins to go out there. But I, I didn't want them working with me because I felt that they won't learn the business around me. And I didn't want people to perceive them as being, you know, privileged or spoiled and we get, you know, time up. No, I put them out there and I actually felt guilty because I used to I used to ignore them. I thought, no, they've got to go learn it on their own and get their get their knees bruised a little bit and get back up and brush themselves off so that they they get it. They totally get it. And it worked. And so today they're mature adults now. They're they're in their forties and they have children. So I'm got grandchildren and and uh, that's really how it went. But the kids were the, the monumental part of my decision, why I did it and how I managed. I brought them in. And it was a tough, a tough run then. I'd be I would be exaggerating, say, oh, it was easy stuff. I mean, time that we spend together is usually weekends, but we make that time. You know, we make that time as family time. I you know, always when I was in sales, I always made time to have dinner at the table. Didn't matter how quick it was. Everybody gather together, argue it out, whatever it was, and then everybody disperses. But we get, you know, we reconnect, we break bread. And that's very important. You know, maybe my background um, has brought that into, you know, what's important to us. But we, it's important that we, we, we have that time together. And we've continued that all along. I, I got to tell you, you must say I had kids really young because you, you look you look probably your kid's age or younger. I mean, it's incredible. <laughs> so, I don't know what you're doing, but but I'd love to learn the recipe. I mean, incredible how how youthful you look. So, you Thank know, you. I believe we talked about your brokerage uh, currently has uh, over a thousand realtors, 1,400, 10 locations, and yes. you've sold over 100,000 homes so far. What are some of the key initiatives you're focused on today to continue to improve and grow your current business? Uh, absolutely. Happy to answer that. That's really important to me is never, never stay stagnant. So I've always been involved in what's new, not being behind the eight ball, but being leading it. And so we're always looking at bringing in new services into the business, uh, whether it's training, whether it's technology, which is huge, as you know. Um, we have an in-house marketing department. We always have, but we've really, you know, brought in more services in that in that field because that's really important today uh, for realtors to be out there, to be exposed, to have their product exposed. You know, there's no longer people can put an ad in the newspaper and get calls, as you know. That doesn't work the way it used to. So now it's social media. So we're really investing hugely in that, as well as one-on-one -on -one training. So I'm, I've committed myself to to helping people achieve their goals. And it's it's no longer the money, it's about getting them to where they need to be to be successful. And that gives me great pleasure. So I've taken it on myself. I've got coaches, trainers within the company, but the past year and a half, around when COVID started, I didn't like the way people were looking on Zooms. I thought, gosh, people are looking really sad and very down. We've got to do something. So we started with, you know, training online, but I thought we've got to step this up. So I started bringing them back in. We do a hybrid every Monday. I, me, personally come in and showtime. And we have Monday morning training and I bring in, you know, new new uh, topics. I bring in professional speakers from different, different parts of, you know, Toronto and the U.S., Bringing in, sharing ideas. Listen, you got it. You got to put it out there. There's people that have that ex, that are experts. Bring them in. So I bring in the experts. I'm there. Pump them up. Send them out. And most recently, I brought on a one, 911 coach. And I said, you know, we need you on the 911, meaning that moment they want you like now. The managers are great. They can answer those questions, but we need somebody on the on the call. So we've incorporated that. So people are really excited about that. As far as administration, we're bringing, we're all paperless now, as you know, everything's electronic. So mm -hmm. we've stepped up that area. We're always looking at what's coming down the pipe. I mean, you probably can share with me what's new in the industry. I mean, we always look south of us to say, hey, what, what's going on? What's new? What's going on? Let's let's check it out. We'll even get on a flight and travel down there and, and, and spend a couple of days with 
brokers just to get a feel of what the market's like and what changes are coming down the pipe. So we're always looking at being there on the change. Yeah. I think being a commercial real estate principal and not being in the brokerage gives you a different perspective when you talk to realtors and brokers on either side of the business. You know, yeah. you touched on culture, company culture, which is so important. It was one of the challenges we had at Alliance, my company, is how do you create a good culture? I mean, DoorDash and Grubhub, these delivery services were really prevalent. We were sending coffee and donuts and bagels and breakfast and lunch to all the different employees throughout the pandemic. It was a challenge for me. Because oh. I, I am an office guy. I learned from osmosis. In the United States, we had essential businesses, which my commercial real estate firm was. And so we went back to the office in Chicago after two months. But I can tell you, Vivian, it was a challenge for me. And it still is. This, this remote workplace is a challenge. And so one of the ladies that works for me, and she's an incredible superstar, I adore her, is she's focusing on what can we do to enhance our culture, whether it's retreats, now yeah. that we can be in person more, because we have offices around the country and we have people from all over the country that are working at Alliance. And we do all these video calls, which is wonderful, but yeah. there's this lack of human connection. You can't, you can't touch someone. You can't, you can't shake their hand. You can't give them a hug. You can't look them in the eye in person. And it's something I struggle with because, you know, I'm 53 years old and how I learned the business was shoe leather, green ledger paper, stamps, envelopes, handwritten checks, shaking someone's hand, giving them a hug, yeah. uh, congratulating them, telling them how wonderful they are. And it doesn't feel the same anymore, this environment. And I think it's a real shame for the younger generation because it seems like this remote learning and, and, and remote working is here to stay for quite some time. And I hope, I hope God willing, it comes back. But let me I, ask you something. I would, go and just to go to, to that note, I, I, you're, on, you know, you're on the right track. I believe that what you're going to be doing is more a hybrid, you know, bringing them in and, and, and going live as well, because people will come in. They want to be in, a, in, in the environment. They want to be where the energy is. You know, being in a room with 5,000 people, 8,000 people, there's nothing better. You can't replace that on a screen alone. It, it, it's hard. But if you do a hybrid, you can. You can share that and the energy exists on, on the power. Look at what's happening now with the entertainment business. They're going back to live concerts. They're selling out like hotcakes, right? Why? Because people want to be in that space. They want to be where the energy is. So what you're doing, if you take it hybrid, it's going to kill it. Yep. I totally, totally agree. Well, we do. So we're, 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 option, we're operational. All of our offices are open. Not everybody comes in, Ben. I'll tell you, I'll tell you quite honestly, very few people come in, but it's okay. It's all right. They know we're here. They'll pop in and out. They've gotten used to working remotely. That's okay too. But we're bringing new people in. I always believe in bringing new people in and creating that that synergy. Eventually, they will come back. See, I, I feel there's this energy that when you're working from home, yeah, you can get lazy real quick. Excuses. Got to throw in a load of laundry. Do yeah. the dishes. Uh, right. I'm going to go out and get a car wash. I'm going to go for a walk, which is fine. Those are all great. But I think the productivity goes down when you're at home. Too many distractions. And the other thing that's lacking. It does. That I see it not does. Being Even the up, banking business, it goes down. Okay. There's no doubt. And, and the thing that I see is a real challenge is working mm -hmm. from home is that you lose that learning curve, that osmosis of being able to walk into my office or someone else's office on the leadership team or whoever and just gain knowledge and experience. And I feel that the younger generation is going to miss out on that. The fact that, you know, uh, an employee can walk into Vivian's office and pick her brain and say, you know what, I'm going through this challenge or I have this, this home I'm selling and here's the challenge with the buyer or the seller or, or with escrow or with title. How would you deal with it? It's not as instant. It's not, again, it goes to that human connection. So in the United States, Vivian, there's been a slowdown in transaction volumes in certain areas and mm -hmm. in the U.S. residential uh, real estate market. How is the market in Canada currently faring right now? And what advice are you sharing today with clients who are debating whether or not it's the right time to buy or to sell? Absolutely. We cover this every Monday. That's why we have our live events, because it's important that we share you know, experiences that are just happening in real time. And what we're finding, Ben, is there's, again, a shortage of inventory. A lot of buyers, very, very few homes. 
Uh, mm. This past weekend in particular, we had one listing that of ours in our, in our own company that we had 40 offers on, okay. 40 offers, which means there's 40 by 39 buyers that didn't get that house. So we're short 39 houses. And that's why I encourage my agents to go out there and work on getting listings. But working on getting listings is not that you want to sell your house. It's you've got to educate the buyer. You've got to educate the buyer and say, listen, people are buying right now, regardless of the interest rate. They've accepted the fact that the rates are the way they are. And they're still very, very reasonable. As far as I'm concerned, very reasonable. There's just, you know, the time, the mindset is don't wait. Sell now. People are buying. They'll pay you top dollar. There's product out there. You just got to look for it. Now we're going to have a lot more pre-construction opening up. We're going to get a ton of pre-construction inventory. If they wait till everything comes on the market, they're going to miss that momentum. I believe right now, if someone has been waiting and, and they need to make a move for personal reasons, it is a perfect time to get top dollar for their property. Excellent time. So maybe the, the, the number of units are down. But the momentum is there. The only reason that they're down is that we're lacking inventory because the buyers have money in their hands. And you know where most of that's coming from, okay? Not just immigration because that, of course, we are all experiencing that influx because we need that to survive and grow. But it's also coming from the, you know, modern mom and dad bank saying, hey, I was going to wait till whenever to help you. But I, after the pandemic, I've decided to help you get into a home now. So there's all this extra cash that's been um you know lent or, or or gifted to the to the younger generation because of covid and that's what's increased the number of, of buyers on the market so the market is good um it's my, my agents the top agents that are working have had their best years ever and i'm not just saying that they the best years ever when we when we do our calculations on the top one percent of the company because we have a an award level but we always calculate the top one percent so corporate, corporate does theirs, I do mine internally, which are almost neck and neck. It's gone up. It's gone up the past, since COVID, the past few years. And it's continually going up. Agents that are working, that have built relationships. Okay, let's go back to, not just you want to sell your house. It's building that relationship. It's all about people. And if you build that relationship and the trust, they're yours for life. And they'll refer clients to you. That's why the small percentage, the 90-10, are the ones that are doing all the deals because they know they got it. They know exactly what they have to do. Well, well, let's touch on that. You have a saying, which I really like. My motto is my life force. People come first and it shows. Yeah. How often do you tell yourself that? And have you ever used your motto to help your priority to keep your priorities aligned with your life goals? I believe, Ben, I probably use that every day. Every day. It's, it's about people. It's a people business and not just saying it's a people business. It's about people. You know, I, it's funny this today, my 911 coach came in and said, Hey, what we taught them on Monday, I had the phone call from all the agents that we, you know, two of them that we talked to and they were so grateful. I said, look at the lives we just saved. And he looked at me, I said, yeah, because these guys would never have known if we didn't teach them this on Monday. And he goes, yeah, you're right. I said, it's about saving lives. It's about, we could have, these people could have gotten out of the business down the road, six months down the road, but now they get it. So it's just a matter of working with them and, you know, step by step. So yes, I, I remind myself of that every day. Um, that's what I work for. I, as I mentioned earlier, yes, it's about the money, but it's not about the money anymore. It's about helping people helping them achieve their goals and sharing with them what I've learned and getting them to where they want to be. That's fantastic. And so let's touch on your book you wrote in 2019. It was called, Yes, You Can. It all starts with you. What inspired you to write a book focused on motivational guidance and personal reflections? It's actually a really interesting adventure that I experienced. I, you know, when I first started back in the day before I bought my company, I attended a a, um, a seminar with uh, Tony Robbins. And that was before Tony Robbins became the popular Tony Robbins. So one of his uh, his, his uh, salespeople or, or, you know, agents came out selling this event. And this was probably 1990. I went to a seminar and it really inspired me to to um, attend. He, I attended. I, I really couldn't afford to go. And so when I said to these, the, uh, the, uh, uh, rep, I said, I, I can't, I'm busy. And he said, you're busy three months from now. And I said, 
well, actually, I can't afford the ticket. And he said, well, ma'am, you can't afford not to go. Well, that really got to me. I said, wow, that's pretty, pretty uh, direct. So I, I, I did go. I attended. And it really changed my perspective. You know, my perspective changed. I didn't feel like I was a big loser. Because um, I did. I felt like a loser at the time. I lost everything. And I um, fast forward 20 years later or more, I was at a, a Tony Robbins event. And one of the um, organizers, um, you know, that heard me talking at different uh, different training sessions said, do you want to introduce Tony? And I said, oh, what? Oh, I can't do that. And he goes, why not? And I said, well, I'm just, are you kidding? I'm, I'm not good enough for that. He goes, Vivian, come on, you attend all the seminars. I want you to introduce Tony. I said, okay, I'll, I'll do it. I thought, yeah, I can do that. He goes, it's scripted. You have nothing to worry about. We give you like an intro, that's it. He said, yeah, here, here's, here's what you have to say. And it's simple. I said, absolutely. And I thought, what a great opportunity. So I went to the event and it was around three o'clock in the afternoon because they usually start at 8 30 in the morning. So everyone had been there. It was like 5,000 people in the audience. I went up on stage. They said, okay, it's your turn to go and, and introduce Tony. And I, I did. I stepped up and I had my notes with me and I was going to stick to the plan. And I did. And I got halfway through the first page of the introduction talking about Tony's, you know, story. And then as I'm talking, this slight piece of paper was placed on my on my notes. And I thought, wow, what's like this handwritten note saying, Tony's stuck in traffic. And I thought, you gotta be kidding me, right? And he goes, uh, and I looked over at the MC and I said, jokingly, you're serious? He goes, yeah, I said, and so I pretended we were joking. So we pretended this was part of the whole scene, the app. And I said, so really, so I said, so he's stuck in traffic. Sure, you know, blah, blah, blah. But then he starts asking me questions about, so how did you get into the, into the business and da, da, da. And so I, I, um, I just told him the story. It just came to my head as well. My life, because he said, how, well, you know, you're a broker of record of a big a brokerage. You know, how, do you, how did you get to where you are? And I went right back to that day. And I went, boom, you have to tell the story. So I did. I told the story, but it, I didn't even know what I was going to talk about because I was not prepared. So I went into what happened that day when I was, you know, in the office and I couldn't afford the ticket. And then I went and how it changed my mindset. Anyways, after that, Tony was late 23 minutes, 23 minutes. And because they have those big clocks on the, on the, on the floor, right? That tells you how long you're talking for. And then finally we got there. It's like, oh God, thank God he's here. It was amazing. So he was listening in the back apparently. And so when he came on stage and he does his like, boom, entrance powerful he looked at me with that deep voice said, great intro dude and i was like i almost fainted of course but um loved it well fast forward i got a phone call i got many calls from that stage conversation because i felt like i was having a conversation with the audience and a, and a publisher called me and he said you've got to write a book i want you to write a book and that's where it all started fantastic what advice are you sharing today with clients who are like, how, how do you, how do you share with young, ambitious people who ask you how they should approach the, their career? Cause I'm sure you get approached a lot by clients and younger people out there who are ambitious and they see your success and they say, what, what do I need to do to, to really achieve my goals in my career? I think pretty much, you know, I, I, I'm like you concerned about the new generation not being involved and connecting with people. My advice to them is say, look, you've got to, you've got to be open-minded to learning, okay? Learning is very important and people skills are very important because you're dealing with human beings, you're dealing with the most important, you know, investment of their lives. And you're not just dealing, you're not transactional. This is not a transactional business. And, you know, I, I bring them into that conversation and then just, you know, making sure that they get the right training, making sure they get the right support, um, what's a, what's really heartbreaking, uh, Ben, is when you see people coming in the business and they get out of the business within the first five years, I think the, the percentage is like 85% of the people don't last. And I'm thinking, are you serious? Like, that's a lot. That's a huge number. Why? Because they don't get the right support. So going back to that, I've always brought in training and coaching before it was even popular because I felt that that's what was missing when I was in, in the business. I had made a commitment to myself before I bought the company to say, I'm going to bring in training. I'm going to bring in training. I'm going to help my agents, you know, keep on top of what's going on. 
That's very important. So what I would say is keep an open mind to training, learn how to deal with people. Uh, you know, empathy is very important. You know, it's not transactional. It's not about making a commission. You know, you've got two ears, one mouth. Listen twice as much as you talk. Listen to what people are saying. You know, people talk too much. They talk too much. The client's saying something. You're not even listening to them. Listen to what they're saying. Listen to what their needs are. And if you build that relationship, you don't just build a relationship on one transaction, but they're going to refer clients to you. They're going to remember you. And that's where the monetization of your database starts really taking effect. So it's about having that mapping it out, map it out, and follow the steps that you need to take. And that's what I would say to the newer agents that are coming in the business. It's well said. And, and building deep rooted connections is so important. You talked about listening and listening is so important when you can listen and understand the truth, you mm. know, people just hear the words, you know, but they don't really understand what someone's saying. If you can yeah. seek the truth and what someone's saying, it's very powerful. When you can build a deep rooted connection with someone, kind of like what we're doing right now yeah. and really listen and understand the truth behind what people are saying, it's such a change and it makes your time so much more efficient because all we have in this life is time. You can make as much money as you want, but you cannot buy back your time. And so you're also, you're also a motivational speaker. I found out the other day, which I thought was really neat. You've shared a stage with Oprah, who's from Chicago, uh, Tony Robbins, Bill Clinton, and other luminaries. What messages do you like to focus on when you're speaking to a group of younger professionals and how do you feel, how does it feel for you personally when you're sharing hard won, hard earned wisdom that you've been through with all your life and all your experiences you've, you've been, you've endeavored. Well, thank you for, 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 for uh, that. You know, I've worked, I was not, I wasn't really talking on stage with these people. I was there. I was part of the event. I was, you know, maybe the intro, but I was uh, totally inspired by being, in their presence. I have to share that. It was very inspirational. Oprah, I did speak to Oprah on a few occasions and she's uh, magical, magical. Uh, they're all magical in their own way. Um, even Sir Richard Branson, I met with him backstage and he was really nervous. And I thought, oh my God, he's like so real. They're real people. Oprah took off her shoes and her feet were killing her. She was holding her shoes in her hand saying, my feet are killing me. And I thought, oh, I love her. Like, that sounds like something I would say. You know, they're all real people. And I, when I saw that, I went, they're powerful, but they're real people. And that's where the magic is. Be authentic. Yeah, there's no question. When you can yeah. be authentic, there's yeah. nothing better because that's, again, it goes back to how to build those deeper connections and, yeah. and really establish relationships that will serve you well. That's what everyone wants in yes. the world. Everyone wants to deal with people that yes. are authentic. They could be themselves. I think people put up a house of cards, especially in my business. You know, when you're younger, you got to fake it till you make it. So you can get loans, you could raise equity, you could find deals. Right. But eventually you get to right. a point in your career where you have to be authentic because that's what builds the the relationships that we're discussing. Yes. So you're in one of the things that inspires me is is people that are charitable and give back, which which you're involved in dozens of charities. You've been yes. recognized many awards for your generosity. It really inspires me, Vivian, um, when I when I read about you. Share more about the few organizations you're involved with and how can others support uh, some of the things that you're, are near and dear to your heart? Absolutely. I've always believed in, you know, being able to give work um, to communities, mostly where we live and work. And so I started by giving back to the local charities that were in need and first it started off with the the women's shelter very important um i just just happened you know i i someone came in my office and they were asking me questions about a location and from there i started investigating what is it and it was a, a women's shelter so i became totally involved in that and i helped them raise four million dollars um in 2007 when they needed a second location uh that was challenging but I, but I, you know, I, I also support the local hospitals. And I, you know, there's, yes, there's a lot of people with big money, but it wasn't that I was trying to get money for a write-off because I didn't have money to write off. Okay. At the time I didn't, but I did it because I felt that it was really important that, you know, here we're going, we're growing the community, we're building houses. But what happens when you go to these hospitals? There was like standing room only. It was, it was, you know, it was, we really needed the infrastructure. So I became part of that community 
um, that community support. And, you know, it's interesting because when you work with, within that sphere, you're meeting some interesting people that I didn't even know existed. And it just, other things happen from there. You know, you're seen in that, in that, in that space and you're, you're, you're getting to know them like first, first name basis. It's, it's an impressive in, in so many ways um, because they're in a league of their own, a lot of these people. But not only that, to see what, what transpires, to see that second shelter being, to being bought, to see the, the children not just being honed, to be getting the counseling that they need, the moms getting counseling that they need. Even, the, you know, you've got to go back into the roots. Where's the problem starting in the community? We all live and work in a community. Our kids go to school in these communities. We should care about who our kids are hanging out with. And we should be trying to help these people that need the assistance and their help. Not to say, oh, well, we're okay, you know, won't talk to them. No, you can't stop that. You can't control that. Especially today with our kids, with the social media, they don't have any control over who they're communicating with. So we really need to focus on really supporting the, the health of the community in so many different ways. I, I do have always believed in the Cancer Society, big time, um, you know, the infrastructure and any capacity is what we support. I have a hard time saying no to charities. Most recently they asked me to uh, chair um, um, a uh, special uh, cancer uh, group and I, 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 you know, I'm gonna be part of it the focus group, but I can't be chairing it because it's, it's going to take up much of my time and I don't want to let anybody down. So I've got one of my other people chairing it, but I'm going to support it 110% because it's really important that we do. And um, that's what I, I do. I just do that because I'm very passionate and I'm fortunate that we can do these things. You know, when we came here from Italy, we didn't have anything. So, you know, kind of nice. Great, great message. So, name of the show is I own it, Vivian. It's being responsible for every aspect of your life. We are all works in progress that I'm sure you're aware of, especially if you own a business and the entrepreneurial spirit you have. Can you share a recent example where you realized you had it wrong and you didn't own it fully? You didn't own the business or you didn't own what fully? You didn't own your actions, your behavior, your your energy, your, your, it's owning every aspect of your life. Is there a time that you didn't own it? Uh, you know, I, I, I guess I'm going to go to, uh, controlling. Are we controlling people here? We're controlling mm -hmm. people, right? Yeah. Okay. You can control things that you do, but mm -hmm. you can't control fate sometimes. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. right. So right. you have to always leave your mind open to, um, Shit happens. Sorry to swear on, but shit happens, right? That's good. Yeah. Keep going. We're all good. <laughs> okay. And, you know, I had an incident myself personally that, that shit happened and I didn't own my day. And that was an eye opener. But it was really, you know, appreciative on my part to say, hey, don't take anything for granted. Never take anything for granted. Okay. Go with it. Pivot if you have to, because pivoting is part of what we do every day. But I'm talking about, hey, don't let it knock you down. Get back up, refocus, and keep going. That's what I can share with my personal experience. Nice. Um, what is the best way to follow you and engage with you if our audience wants to learn more about Vivian Risi? Oh, absolutely. I'd be happy to engage with anyone that is looking for a second opinion or any assistance or guidance in any way. They can look me on, on up on Instagram, Vivian Reese. Just just dial me on Instagram. I'm happy to engage in any way that I can to help anyone that's looking for, you know, a lending ear or support or just a little bit of a, you know, hey, what would you do if? I'm happy to help in any way. So I love if, so well. even though even though you look 25, you're showing your age. I think it's called DMing on Instagram. Well, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to answer it. So don't start labeling me as having plastic surgery. But, 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 but who's counting? Who's um, counting? By, by the way, I love, I love the Wonder Woman statue behind you. That's pretty cool. You know, it's Wonder Woman and, and, and Superman. Actually, that okay. was a gift. Yeah, you can't see it. I cut your heads off on your screen, but they're cool. That was a gift from one of our lenders. Uh, we had a, a kickoff meeting and he uh, he wanted to give me a gift on stage and he gave me this. And I was like, oh, my God, what is that? And and I loved it. I thought, and he personalized it. And I, he had an artist, a local artist do it. So I love it. I just think it's great. So 
we're going to wrap up with our three questions. Are you ready? Okay. I didn't even ask you three questions. You didn't give me a heads up, Ben. Okay, go ahead. No, don't worry about it. You'll be fine. Uh, so in our in our studio in Laguna Beach, California, we have a couch, and I would say, Vivian, you are this young, vivacious woman now. A lot of experience uh, has grown your business tremendously, influenced and impacted a lot of people. Go back to when you were sixteen years old. Oh. What advice would you give yourself? And knowing what you know now, the experiences that you've had and the education you've provided yourself to become the woman you are today. What would you go back and tell yourself to help yourself at 16 years old? Not to care so much what people think. It's great advice. Great yeah. advice. Yeah. That's a, that's a, that's a tough one because everyone, everyone doesn't realize that most people don't give a shit about you anyways. And you shouldn't, you shouldn't worry about them. And I think a lot of people worry about the future yeah. instead of worrying about the present and say, you know what? It just doesn't matter. And a lot of people have amnesia. They forget after a few minutes anyways when something happens. That's right. So, so it's our last day on earth. God forbid. It's just me and you. Okay. It's, it's our last meal together. Okay. What are we having? Well, it's your decision. You pick. What are, we, what, are we, what are we eating for our last meal and what are we drinking together? Your choice. Okay. Hmm. I'm... Um... I'm going to say, let's have a nice plate of pasta. Okay. okay. Some straight Parmesan from, cheese. Straight, straight from an Italian woman. I love it. Okay. It's, 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 it's comfort food, right? It's nice in the blood. Yeah. It's and a uh, few appetizers, you know, if we can put a few appetizers there, you know. Okay. Okay. Um, and drink a nice glass of wine. Uh, absolutely. Are you we... know, not too much because then, you know, you don't want to get depressed, right? Because if you drink too much, you get all emotional. So just enough to just... Feel good. How uh, is? Are we doing a red? Uh, red or white? I'll leave that up to you, Ben. Uh, I'm a red. I'm a, I collect wine. I'm a red guy. I like red too. Thank you. Good. A good Bordeaux would oh. be so great with a pasta. Ah, okay. What year? Well, oh, well, we'll have to figure that out. Who knows? Okay. We'll, when we get to that point, we'll figure it out. Okay. So, in our studios, Vivian, in Laguna Beach. Yes. Uh, we have a grand piano, uh, six electric guitars and drums. If you could bring in studio with us, any musician or band, they could be living or deceased to play us a song. Who are you bringing in? It's your choice. And what song are they playing? They could be living or deceased. Oh, wow. That's really tough. Because I, I mean, there's... Elvis Presley became famous all of a sudden. Back, you know, he's always been around. Like he's always been famous, but recently, I mean, the guy's killed it. You know, when he when he played Elvis on screen. So I love Elvis. Um, uh, John Lennon. Wow. I mean, John Lennon. You can't replace the talent that man has. Is was incredible. Even to this day, I'm doing a course. I'm actually taking a course, but, uh, online course, and we were doing a. Um, you know, a, a program, a part of the course was on, on, you know, people in groups. And so we did a segment on, on the Beatles. It was exciting and playing their music was like back in the day. And I went to see the Beatles, by the way, I was eight years old. I went to see the Beatles live, which is what, not what, year, what year was that? 63. Okay. You got my age now. Do that. I, I can. <laughs> I'm in commercial real estate. I can figure it out quickly. Okay. Okay. There you go, folks. You just gave her age without even asking her directly. You see how that works? That's how you do it with a woman. You just prod, you prod just, her out in conversation, and then she lays it on you. So that's how it works for all you men out there that are wondering how how old someone is. I feel um, you know, I love my age. I love my yeah, skin. You look fantastic. And thank you very much if I do because I feel good until what I. Do you do, what do you do for your health? I mean, you're working out. What are you doing health wise? You no, know, I used to work out like more in the gym part before, mm -hmm. but I, I I do my own thing. After COVID, I started doing things at home more, and so I do whatever I can. I do some weights. I walk. I walk a lot every day, so I'll do an hour walk a day. An mm -hmm. hour walk. I don't do the running anymore. I used to run, but I thought eh, I don't want to do a you know take a fall. It's just too risky, and mm -hmm. uh, do that and. Um, just, you know, meditation at night, half an hour, nice. you know, meditation, appreciation mm -hmm. of my day, calm down, and then pick my favorite show on Netflix. 
<laughs> nice. I, I meditate as well. I meditate in the morning and then I do it at night and it's, it's uh, a, it's a sad scent. It really allows me to focus, communicate better, interact with people. Yes. Um, I'm a much calmer version of Ben Reinberg than I used to be, especially being an entrepreneur. Well, and I think you, do. you know, you need that, right? You're always like, you know, up, up, you're always up. going. Yeah. Sometimes I always say, if you could slow things down, you will speed up results. And a lot of people are like, well, what do you mean by that? What yeah. I mean by that is if you could slow down and see the big picture and just take your time and do things right, uh -huh. you'll be more efficient in a task you do or something you're trying to accomplish. And so, yeah. uh, Vivian, thank you so much for your time today. If you are interested in learning more about the knowledge that Vivian Reese just dropped on us, feel free to drop kick the right hand button and click subscribe on YouTube. Feel free to like uh, our shows when you see them. The more you like, the more we could share around the world and let it go viral. To follow me more, go to benreinberg.com. You can follow me on all the different social media platforms, learn about how you can invest in commercial real estate and build your wealth. If you want to learn more about commercial real estate, invest in our brand new Alliance Medical Property Fund. It's the hottest fund on the market right now. Feel free to log on to AllianceCGC.com and learn how we can create wealth for you and your family through passive investing. Vivian Risi, thank you so much for joining us today. What a privilege. It was so great to see you. Keep rocking, keep inspiring, keep growing your business. Thank and you. thanks again for joining us. Thank you too, Ben. It was wonderful. We had a great time. Absolutely. Bye, Bye guys. Thank you for listening to the I Own It podcast with Ben Reinberg. To hear our past episodes and connect with Ben, visit benreinberg.com.